Welcome to the fascinating journey of coffee production and processing. This exploration delves into the intricate stages involved in transforming coffee seeds, or beans, into the delightful beverage enjoyed by millions worldwide. Thanks for tuning in. We are grateful for your presence until the end. The journey of coffee, from its humble beginnings as a seed to the aromatic cup we all savor, unfolds in three significant stages, as depicted in the accompanying flowchart. The initial stage involves planting the seeds, setting the foundation for the coffee plant's growth. The second stage sees the cherries undergo pre-processing, a crucial phase that prepares them for their ultimate transformation. Lastly, the third stage involves the processing of the coffee beans. Each of these stages consists of multiple steps, collectively playing a vital role in shaping the final taste and quality of your favorite cup of coffee. Once the coffee beans are available, various types of regular brewed coffee and instant coffee can be prepared. Now, let's explore these fascinating stages in more detail. The expedition commences with the sowing of coffee seeds. This first stage involves nurturing seedlings in shaded nurseries. Once they are strong enough, they are transplanted to their permanent outdoor locations. The seedlings are watered frequently and shielded from bright sunlight until they are robust enough for permanent planting. Planting usually occurs during the wet season, ensuring the soil around the young trees remains moist, while the roots become firmly established. Coffee comes from the berries of coffee shrubs, which are evergreen and can grow up to 15 foot tall when unpruned. The leaves are shiny, dark green, roughly 5 inches long, about 2.4 inches wide, and arranged in pairs. Fragrant white flowers, grouped in axillary clusters, bloom all at once. The berries that follow the blossoming of the flowers embark on a gradual color transformation. Initially, they exhibit a green hue, which slowly turns to yellow. As the transition continues, the yellow deepens into a rich crimson. In the case of coffee trees, they typically start bearing fruit, known as coffee cherries, within a span of three to five years. These cherries undergo their own color metamorphosis over several months, turning a bright, deep red when they are ripe and ready for harvest. Just like the seeds, the fruits also contain caffeine content and exhibit a unique sweetness. There are over 120 species of coffee, all of which are grown from seed. These coffee plants belong to the extensive family known as Rubiaceae. Here are some interesting facts about coffee seeds and their main ingredient, caffeine. The caffeine in coffee beans serves as a natural pesticide, protecting the plants from herbivores. The caffeine content varies among different coffee species. Caffeine present in the nectar of coffee plants creates an olfactory memory for honeybees, encouraging them to return. The primary species of coffee that are commercially cultivated include Coffea conifera, often known as Robusta, and Coffea arabica, commonly referred to as Arabica. Robusta coffee, among various coffee varieties, holds a significant position. It contributes to about 40% of the world's coffee production, underscoring its importance. Robusta is distinct due to its high caffeine content, which is approximately 2.2% to 2.7% by weight. This high caffeine content is believed to contribute to its superior pest resistance, a notable advantage that sets it apart and makes it more cost-effective to cultivate compared to other varieties. The Robusta variety thrives in the tropical regions of Asia and Africa, including the western and central regions of sub-Saharan Africa. These regions offer the ideal conditions for Robusta, which flourishes in environments characterized by altitudes between 650 feet and 2,600 feet above sea level, and warmer climates. The Robusta plant typically takes about 3 to 4 years to yield fruit, and the berries ripen within a period of 9 to 11 months after flowering, enhancing its efficiency as a crop. Furthermore, the seeds are known for their strong taste, which is often incorporated into dark or espresso blends, thereby enhancing their flavor profile. This amalgamation of factors highlights the significance of Robusta in the global coffee landscape. Unlike Robusta, 
Arabica coffee is the result of hybridization between Coffea conifera and Coffea eugenioides. Renowned for its sweet, complex flavor and ability to thrive at higher altitudes, typically over 4,000 feet above sea level, Arabica originates from tropical regions in Latin America and Eastern Africa. Arabica contributes to approximately 60% of global coffee production. The Arabica coffee plant typically takes about three to four years to yield fruit, commonly referred to as coffee cherries, which ripen within six to nine months after flowering. The seeds of Arabica coffee contain about 1.1% to 1.5% caffeine by weight, a lower percentage than that in Robusta coffee, about 50% less. Additionally, Arabica coffee is relatively more susceptible to diseases and pests. Despite their higher cost and increased susceptibility, Arabica beans are distinguished by their sweeter and softer taste, contributing to their popularity. This combination of factors has indeed resulted in a significant presence of Arabica in the coffee market. In addition to the more common Arabica and Robusta, there are other less prevalent variants of coffee, including Liberica, Stenophylla, Mauritiana, and Racemosa among others. Coffee plants are cultivated in more than 70 countries worldwide. One of the remarkable aspects of coffee beans is their distinct attributes, including flavor, aroma, body, and acidity. These characteristics often allow us to trace the origin of coffee beans back to their specific country of cultivation. Once the cherries ripen, they are harvested, marking the beginning of a crucial second stage known as pre-processing, essential for the production of green coffee beans. Harvesting methods vary depending on plantation size, hand-picking, labor-intensive yet precise, is favored for smaller plantations. While mechanization proves more efficient for larger ones. After the harvest, the berries are pre-processed, using one of two main methods, the wet method or the dry method. The choice between these methods depends on the available resources and the desired quality of the coffee. The wet method involves removing the fruit from the beans, which results in wet processed or washed coffee. This method requires specific equipment and a substantial amount of water. Now, let's delve into the steps involved in this method. The process commences with coffee cherries being sorted through immersion in water. This process effectively separates the defective or immature cherries that float from the ripe ones that sink, thereby guaranteeing that only the highest quality cherries are selected for further processing. A machine removes the skin of the cherries and some pulp as they pass through a screen. However, a considerable amount of pulp remains attached to the bean, necessitating further removal. This can be achieved through traditional techniques such as the ferment and wash method, or through more recent methods like machine-assisted wet processing, aquapulping, or mechanical demucilaging. The fermentation process, which spans from 8 to 36 hours, concludes when the parchment becomes pebbly, followed by meticulous rinsing to prevent sourness. Wastewater produced during fermentation should be prevented from contaminating fresh water supplies. Conversely, the dry method, also known as unwashed or natural coffee, is the oldest coffee processing method, commonly employed in regions with limited water resources. After harvesting, the entire cherry undergoes cleaning before being left to dry in the sun or on drying tables. The cherries are periodically raked to ensure uniform drying and prevent mildew. Following the pre-processing of coffee cherries, the next steps involve drying, milling, and decaffeination to complete the pre-processing stage, as shown on the flowchart, on the right. Let's explore these steps now. Regardless of the pre-processing method used, wet, or dry, the beans should dry to an optimal moisture content between 8% and 12.5%, typically around 10 to 12%. This can be achieved through sun drying or machine drying on various surfaces such as mats or drying tables elevated to waste level on supports. Covers are used to maintain the optimal moisture levels, protecting them from rain or inclement weather. The drying phase is crucial for maintaining the quality of coffee beans. 
Over-drying can cause them to become brittle, leading to hole breakage, while under-drying can result in moisture retention, potentially leading to fungal and bacterial decay. After drying, the beans are milled, optionally polished, and sorted to remove any defects. The beans at this stage are referred to as green coffee beans, which are then bagged and transported. Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia, Indonesia, and Ethiopia have been among the top five global producers of green coffee beans. Green coffee seeds at this point can undergo decaffeination using the Swiss water process or a combination of steam and a solvent, as depicted in step 2.1 of the flowchart. The caffeine extracted during this process is typically sold to pharmaceutical companies. Before we delve into the final stage 3, were you aware that, there are some peculiar methods of pre-processing coffee cherries involving animals? Let's briefly explore a couple of them. Firstly, there's Kopi Luwak, also known as, Civic Coffee, a distinctive type of coffee made from Arabica coffee cherries. These cherries are consumed, digested, and excreted by the Asian palm civet, also known as a toddy cat, or musang, a vivarid native, to South and Southeast Asia. The civet consumes only the ripest coffee cherries, which then ferment in its intestines. The beans are subsequently collected from the civet's feces. Here is a visual of the coffee beans excreted by the civet. This unique process, combined with the action of digestive enzymes, breaks down the proteins and carbohydrates in the beans, resulting in the formation of distinctive flavor compounds. As a result, Kopi Luwak, or Civic Coffee, acquires a rich, slightly smoky flavor with chocolate undertones. It is relatively expensive and is primarily produced on the Indonesian islands of Sumatra, Java, Bali, Sulawesi, and in East Timor. Meanwhile, in Thailand, a different approach is taken with black ivory coffee. Arabica coffee beans are consumed by elephants, and their digestive enzymes reduce the bitter taste of the beans. The beans are then collected from the elephant dung. This process results in a unique flavor profile that is highly sought after. Black Ivory Coffee is one of the most expensive coffee brands and is about three times pricier than Kopi Luwak. The availability of Black Ivory Coffee relies on several factors, the presence of coffee cherries, the consumption rate of the elephants, the amount of beans damaged during chewing, and the effectiveness of the mahouts in retrieving undamaged beans. Now, let's explore the third and final stage of coffee production, known as processing. Here, the green coffee seeds obtained from the previous step, as discussed above, undergo a transformation into the aromatic beverage we all love. In this final processing step, the beans are introduced into a dedicated roasting machine and roasted until they reach the desired level. This crucial step changes the physical and chemical properties of the beans, giving the coffee its distinctive aroma and flavor. Roasting typically starts when the temperature inside the bean reaches approximately 392 degrees Fahrenheit, although this can vary depending on the seed's moisture and density. The intense heat transforms starches into sugars, which results in the browning of the bean. New oils, such as, caffeine, emerge at approximately the same temperature, enhancing the aroma and flavor of the coffee. As the roasting process continues, sucrose levels decrease and may even disappear in darker roasts. Aromatic oils and acids begin to weaken around 401 degrees Fahrenheit, altering the flavor profile of the coffee. Once the beans are roasted, they are categorized based on their color as perceived by the human eye. They can be classified as light, medium light, medium, medium dark, dark, or very dark. Interestingly, the difference in caffeine content between a light roast and a dark roast is only about 0.1%. The roasted coffee beans are then ground to the desired granularity for brewing. Professional tasters, or coffee cuppers, assess the brewed coffee's aroma, acidity, body, and aftertaste to determine its flavor profile. The coffee beans are graded based on these attributes, with higher grades reserved for exceptional quality and desirability. Brewing coffee involves key considerations such as the brew ratio, grind fineness, extraction, and holding temperatures, and additional flavorings. 
Coffee beans can be ground using a burr grinder, blade grinder, or a mortar and pestle. The burr grinder is preferred due to its consistent grind size and adjustability. The size of the grind significantly influences the extraction rate during the brewing process. Optimal extraction occurs between 196 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, while the ideal holding temperatures range from 185 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, extending up to 199 degrees Fahrenheit. And the ideal serving temperature ranges from 154 to 174 degrees Fahrenheit. The journey of coffee doesn't conclude once the coffee is brewed and savored. The leftover coffee grounds can be repurposed in various ways, such as fertilizing plants or serving as a natural deodorizer. This cycle of growth, harvest, processing, brewing, and repurposing encapsulates the sustainable journey of coffee from seed to cup and beyond. But wait, there's one more item left in the coffee journey. The instant coffee. The fascinating journey of the coffee bean extends far beyond the brewing of regular coffee. A notable variant is instant coffee, a quick-to-prepare beverage that encapsulates the essence of brewed coffee beans. The production process of instant coffee mirrors that of regular coffee up to the grinding stage. However, at this point, the process diverges, as shown by the dotted lines in the visual, involving additional steps to transform the ground beans into an instantly brewable form. This innovative product was conceived by David Strang of Invercargill, New Zealand, who patented it in 1890. Following the grinding and processing stage 3, the coffee's aroma and flavor are extracted using water that has been pressurized and heated to approximately 347 degrees Fahrenheit. The concentration of coffee in the liquid is then increased through either evaporation or freeze concentration. In a commercial setting, instant coffee is typically produced as solids through two primary methods, freeze drying or spray drying. These solids can be rehydrated when needed, providing a convenient and quick way to enjoy a cup of coffee. Moreover, instant coffee is also manufactured in a concentrated liquid form, ready for direct consumption as a beverage. The versatility and convenience of instant coffee have significantly contributed to its widespread popularity. Whether you're enjoying a freshly brewed cup or a quick instant coffee, recall the intricate journey from seed to cup. It highlights the innovative spirit continually reshaping our coffee drinking experience, emphasizing coffee's enduring appeal in our daily lives. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please support us by sharing, subscribing, ringing the bell, and giving us a thumbs up. Thanks again.